this is just some audio patter to fill time for about 30 seconds I like to pretend people are coming to my stream and I want to give them a little time although it is too little to really do it why did I change from a French accent no, from a German accent to a French accent and neither of them is very good I, I, that was just like a accent that was traveling west over time Russian, German and then French um, Bonjour, that was French Canada, so technically still West. Um, anyway, hello and welcome to the stream. Today we will be doing um, quite a few things actually. Um, maybe, I mean, you know, you don't, we don't know. Uh, or at least we, we're planning to do a few things and there's a few problems we need to deal with, as always. And one of them is the fact that I have my Emacs buried, but I think we can fix that. And also, we should probably not be watching ourselves stream. It's a little bit masturbatory, and it also just causes problems. Okay, here's the latest updated version. Okay, um, now I thought I'd found something really cool called Wolfram Script, which you can install for free. Um, and that lets you do uh, Wolfram Cloud stuff from the command line, which is really awesome. However, and when I ran it on my Linux machine, but the machine that's hosting this VM, uh, it gave me Mathematica 11.0.1. Uh, that was fantastic until I realized what it actually does uh, is it, l it loads the latest version of the Wolfram kernel you have on your machine already. So it's not going to give us Mathematica 11.0.1 unless something very strange has been, uh, been happening. However, I think it still has some value. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and um, and download it and see what happens. I don't know. I've not, not done this before. Okay. Download. And there should be, it should automatically figure out that I, oh, shiny. Um, we use, uh, we're on CentOS, we use the RPM. Uh, save file. And once this little thingy is done, Viola. And by the way, if you're... Oh, wow. I should have probably put Firefox in the background. If you're wondering, couldn't I have just done this from my... You know, copied the script from my other machine? Uh, I could have, but I'm not... Didn't. So there we go. So it's going to be sudo because we need sudo to install globally... Or to run RPM, I think, even. And it's going to complain. No, it's not, actually. This actually works really well. Okay. And then we should be able to say... Now, by the way, if you're ever not sure about what a package installs, you can use QPL. I'm almost sure it's Wolfram script. Right. Um, not what I expected, actually. Um, there it is. User bin Wolfram script is like right up here. So that's one way, and I, in this case, I should have just known it. And rehash, because I'm using T-shell. Aha! Wolfram kernel not found. So grooviness... Um, we have, this sort of makes sense, because I don't have Mathematica, oh. Uh, uh huh. Um, I know I can't, uh, uh, export Wolfram kernel, because I don't have one here. Although I'm tempted, <laughs> no, I don't want to do that. I want to do something that people can do for free, uh, so I could, in theory, just copy the Wolfram kernel over to this machine, but I'm not going to do that. So, let's see. So, what happens? Use or export. Okay. Well, that's... Oh, to set Wolfram script kernel path. Okay. That seems kind of reasonable. Um, how about some instructions now? La, da, da, da. And this is actually really useful because I don't like the, the non-command line interface of, uh, of Wolfram uh, Cloud. It's pretty ugly. Um, let's see. So this is examples if you can get the damn thing installed. Oh, hang on. Um, da, 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 da. Okay, well, Wolfram's cl that seems like a fairly easy instruction. I, I, 10 to 1 says it's not going to work, because it's going to need somehow to, to authenticate me. Combination of options is not valid. Well, that's not interesting. Okay, we do have some options here. A help. 
you give it some code, go to file. I'm wondering if we can't go into interactive mode if we're on the cloud. Um, execute the code locally. Oh dear. Um, oh dear. So apparently it's not going to run like Mathematica like it does on my, my other machine um, and not give me like a, a prompt like I'm looking for. It's still actually sort of cool that we can run files from this, but it has become a lot... Oh! Nope. Um... Uh, well, I mean, let's do this. I don't think line-wise is really what we want, but you know what the hell. Combination of options is not valid. Well, of course it's not valid. Why would it be? This is, this is, and I'm pretty sure that it didn't install a man page. Well, it might have actually. It did. I'll be nice. Oh, cool. Oh, we need a cloud base. Okay, okay, okay. Um, so, that's, these, these are stupid examples. Let's see if we get an interesting example. See, okay, these are slightly better examples. Oh, and it looks like they want to use .wl as the extension for the, um, Mathematical, the Wolfram language, which I totally support because .m makes Emacs think I'm an Objective-C or something. Um, okay. Um, here we go. Run the Wolfram language in interactive REPL. That's what I want. Uh, apparently, that you can't do that with the cloud mode. All right, hang on. Uh, cloud base is, uh, oh, so apparently, yeah. All right, so this is actually a nice, really formatted version, but it doesn't give us any new information. Now, if I do this, so it says by default, which usually means, and these brackets usually mean you don't have to put in the option. Uh, but apparently, for these monkeys, you do. I call them monkeys, that's kind of bad. They're, they're actually probably human-like creatures. Yeah. Hmm. Not caring for it. Combination of options is not valid. You betcha. Um. Oh, maybe it needs to. No. All right. Hang on a sec here. Now, when in doubt, uh, when things go bad, uh. You know, you could think of your favorite things if you were Mary, not Mary Poppins, the other one. Um, but let's see if we can, oh, come on. Let's try some other examples. So this should use, okay, good. It didn't work because there's no, nothing installed. Now, cloud, aha, here's where it gets interesting. So stand by while I look up my uh, freaking, which is probably not, um, my, my Wolfram ID is not a uh, secret. In fact, it is... I just changed it today. Cool. Um, it's Wolfram at BarryCarter.info. Nothing surprising there. Okay, and good. It does mute the password so I can type it in without you bum seeing it. And by the way, I am okay with calling you guys bums. I mean, because there's no one here, but even if there were. Uh, so monkeys know. Okay, let's try that again. Sorry, I have to keep jumping between machines, and it's vaguely annoying. Um, and yes, I could just cut and paste it from somewhere, but that that would be bad. Four. All right. Now we're nope. Doesn't like that. what was my earlier line by line line wise so we I don't think this is gonna work because yep but if I do minus cloud okay so minus cloud minus I, I doubt that'll work whoa that I think I just got the basic help again yeah 
give it a code, give it a file. Um, execute the code locally. Verbose. Yeah, authenticate. Okay, so I'm authenticated. I'll probably have to re-authenticate each time. Um, because when we freeze the machine, I, I don't know if this will live. It might, actually. Um, timeout, carousel, and cut format type. Print all. Hmm. So let me go back over to my other machine and see if Wolfram script minus linewise works. Oh, it does. It's gorgeous. So why can't I do linewise with Cloud? That might actually be literally they don't allow it f because it would be too useful. So let's take a look. So this might be a piece of crap that we just waste some time on. But hey, I don't. What does API mean though? Um. API does not seem to make mean any sense here. Okay, so what is this cloud API that we're looking at here? I'm guessing it's just a Mathematica notebook. But let's find out. Cool! Man, that, that looks like a real API there. wonder what the hell it does. We don't know. Terms of use. That is groovy. That is a fantastic API. Um, so let me go do it with the arguments, but I, I mean, is that just the addition API? That is bizarre. 42 is the answer to the universe. Let's see if we get it again. Someone's gotten clever. <laughs> They've gotten clever with it. Okay, cool. So I probably need to figure out what the hell Wolfram API is. Uh, so here we're going to try to bring it low. This should not work because we don't have a kernel installed. We good. Okay. So let me. So quite depressing. Quite depressing. Wolfram script minus cloud. Let's see if it'll even run my library. Um, let's see what that... No, that's not going to... Minus F, I think. Cool. Oh. Symbol times... So apparently I can run files in it, but I can't sort of stay in it after it's read the file. So I cannot do this. What's interesting there is it didn't complain about the command line options, but it just didn't work. Um, now the question is, can I do this for the standard? Oh, okay. I cannot do the, uh, sometimes programs will accept blank as the, as the, um, as the, uh, as to mean standard input. Now, I'm going to create a separate directory for this because this is getting, well, it's stupid actually. Um, we could create a named pipe, which I will call, ooh, so let's see if, this is not going to be useful in any way, but let's see if we can create a named pipe. Um, uh, make block or special, do I mean make node? Or do I mean make FIFO? I mean make FIFO. It's been a while since I've done this. Um, okay. And we will name our pipe Pipe. We will name our pipe... Okay. Okay. Um... It might be you can't create these on virtual machines. Um... So... And by the way, there's another page for it. The okay, that's the name for the, the, the C function. Okay, so I'm not happy. Um, Alright, so what do you think's wrong? I think maybe no name types on VMs? Um, and actually I should say VirtualBox. Because that's what we're using. 
Um, let's see. I'm just trying to make a special kind of make node. Okay. He is he's trying to create a special kind of make node though. That is not um How did I lose that page? Okay. Oh, I guess I did a uh okay. Um Okay, so this looks like the most relevant mm. Okay, people are gonna do like cross cross machine nodes. Um So this this thing sounds way oh you know what that's because I shouldn't be doing make node I should be doing uh, make FIFO oh actually hang on this should be it is a name type but let's see what this is cannot make FIFO let's see what this is um whoa no one's answered him okay. Um, so maybe this is a known problem that hasn't been solved yet. Blah, 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 blah. Oh, wait. Okay, okay, so maybe that's, except this is not a shared, oh, is it? Hang on. <whistles> My entire home directory is shared, that's why. Wow. Alrighty. Um... I don't think this level at home is actually shared, though. Um, uh, user, well, let's just call him no sharing. And I will need to sudo this, then I can sudo chown to user the no sharing. Um, so, I wasted quite a bit of your time now. Now, let's see if I can do a make FIFO. And I should be able to do it without special permissions. It's not a special... There we are. So why do we do, do this? So we can now do Wolfram script minus file pipe. And then in another um, window... This is just, like, terrible. Um, see? Nope, that's not what I wanted. I wanted um, send it to the pipe. Yeah, there's a way to do this that I don't remember. Um, this might be it. This might actually be it. It's just that we're not getting anything to be reading from the pipe. Oh, that did something. Oh, wow. So that kind of did something. So if we now do this with minus cloud... We might be able to create something so freaking horrible. Yeah. All right, screw it. Um, so we do, the Wolfram script is pretty good. It does give us cloud powers on the command line, which is useful. We will probably be using it at some point, but it is certainly not what I hoped it was. So let us, um, let us do this. Okay, in our, uh, uh, in our answer at one point, we are going to mention that I don't account for Jupiter's atmosphere. The only reason we're going to mention that is because I can cleverly mention the little trick for Earth's atmosphere. Um, okay. Now, this is a problem with our Jupiter lunar eclipses thing. Right now, I set the, uh, I set the uh, tolerance to 60 seconds, which means it checks every, uh, you know, it, if there's an eclipse that lasts less than 60 seconds, it'll skip over it. That's not doesn't sound like a big deal, except... The code only checks for partial uh, for total eclipses if there's a partial eclipse, and some of these partial eclipses only last like 30 seconds before becoming total. Although, as I say that, um, it occurs to me that all total eclipses are also partial eclipses, so maybe that's not a big deal. Uh, I thought for a moment that uh, it was possible for the partial eclipse to pass too quickly for a sea spice to catch it and go straight to a total eclipse, but I just realized in fact that um, if you're, well I'm going to double check the code but I mean it, it, it seems like now that I think about it, uh, which I probably should have done before but I don't um, let's see okay. 
So this is a check for, and GFQ is our penumbral data with the parameter of one, which I'm sure, actually, you know what, I, in, in fact, I'm so sure I don't even want to check it now. Penumbral data, when the parameter is one, uh, let returns greater, okay. So this is just checking for greater than zero. So we're, 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 we're psyched. So this will, in, so if it's greater than, obviously, um, greater than one, that's also greater than zero because if your, if X is greater than one, that implies X is greater than zero. And by the way, that's one way you can see that there's an infinite number of mathematical true statements. For every integer, and actually for every rational, and te technically for every real number, you can always make a statement like X, if X is greater than whatever number implies X is greater than that number minus one. Um, so, so that's just, that's why, you know, people, that's why, I mean, you can in theory write down all the proofs that are possible, but you'll get stuff like that that's very, very um, basic. Of course, then you'll also get separately from that, for all X, X is greater than X minus one. For, for at least all x in the natural numbers or whatever. Actually, for all x in the real numbers. So that, that's the kind of, this is one reason people don't just run proof machines uh, that spit out every possible mathematical proof because it's going to take forever to get past uh, these very simple proofs. So that was totally unrelated to what we're doing. Okay, so actually the problem I thought was a problem is not a problem. Um, which means I probably should not have stopped uh, on the other machine, I had this stuff going, and then I stopped it because I was uh, I was worried about this problem. So, okay. Um, and then I was saying, when we sort all the data, we need to make sure that, like, you know, if there's a partial eclipse, it can be followed by a total eclipse, or the end of a partial eclipse, but it can't be followed by the end of a total eclipse, because that doesn't make any sense. Okay. Wow. So all the stuff I want to do, so this time I think we've kind of killed it in the sense of doing nothing at all that the um, nothing at all that the uh, that we wanted to do in the stream nothing at all that's interesting um, and okay so get tons of ma okay okay yeah this is actually something we did want to do and now one question is how bright are planets I mean uh, I don't mean intelligence wise clearly the earth is stupid so no earthquake so it doesn't matter doesn't mind um, but how much, you know, when they reflect light, how bright are they? And um, and there's a there's a formula you can sort of use that almost works um, that will tell you the the magnitude of a planet. Now, of course, that's going to depend based uh, that's going to depend on how far it is from the sun. The further from the sun it is, the less light it receives to reflect. How far it is from Earth, uh, the further it is from Earth, the less light that is uh, reflected back to Earth because we see a smaller, you know, we the light gets spread out in all directions when we get less of it. And um, the angular width of the planet, but that's actually the same thing as the Earth distance. That, that varies with Earth distance. Um, and then there's the albedo of the planet, uh, which is like the libido, except brighter. Now, the albedo is the percentage of light that a planet reflects. Uh, I was surprised. You would think the moon reflects a lot of light, but it turns out it only reflects like 11%. But the, the sort of biggest problem is, um, the biggest factor, you know, for especially from the moon, is the phase, is the, is the uh, what they call the phase angle. Um, so, and there is, if we assume that the planets are Lambertian reflectors, we can come up with the formula. Unfortunately, the planets are not 100% Lambertian reflectors. Th they're pretty close, actually. Uh, so that doesn't quite work. So one of the things I was thinking about doing, as you can see from all of this stuff, um, oh, and I might add Nightbot to my um, to my stupid. Why don't I? Okay, I can do that too. So, so one of the things I was going to do is try to uh, get a formula for uh, Lambertian magnitude, uh, and it's not going to be 100% accurate. But then we could actually adjust it by using the um, uh, the phase angle formula for the actual planets, which which they have, people have done like little computations on. Um, so that's one possibility, and I'm wondering if we should do that. The other thing is I could get Nightbot working on my channel. I saw somebody else get it working yesterday, and it was pretty exciting. Um, 
And at some point, I need to decide which of um, Jupiter's moons is uh, not really a moon. Because we have some really tiny things claiming to be moons. And I, the moon declator, uh, really we don't want to be considering those as lunar eclipses. Uh, so, now you might think that's all there is, but no, there's more. Well, what the hell is there more? Um, I was thinking about playing with JavaScript autocomplete. Um, and then at some point I wanted to, I have a lot of data on the Earth that, I, that I'm storing on servers in various compressed forms that at some point I hope to serve out especially to my own game that will access this data. So at some point I do need to get a sort of a, a inventory of what kind of data I have and uh, you know how much of it, um, and at some point I guess the question would be you know how much of it do we want to actually use. Um, for example, I know which animals are, are around a given area. I don't know if we necessarily need to tell the user, you sense that gophers live in this area. Because, I mean, you know, th even if they do, they're not necessarily going to be up and around and doing whatever it is gophers do. Um, okay. So I think we're going to go to the magnitude thing because um, there it is vaguely interesting. And what we're going to do here is the very first thing we're going to do is also the most boring thing, which is... Um, Look at the uh, look at the for a, for a true Lambertian reflector. Find out what the relation is between the phase angle and the amount of light that is reflected. That ignores things like albedo. Uh, it ignores things like um, it distance. All that stuff. This is just sort of how a perfect Lambertian reflector. Okay. Formula. Lambertian reflection. So this is the ideal matte surface, and and our planets are not really shiny. I mean, they look shiny because they reflect light, but they're not really made of mirror-like substances. Okay, and I think it's very simple, actually. It's the uh, cosine law. I don't know what that is, but, you know. The radiant intensity observed from my view is directly proportional to the cosine of the angle between the direction of the incident of light and the surface normal. Booyah. That, we got it. Um, cosine of phase angle. Now, normally, you know, this is a function we're going to add to BC lib, but we really don't want to do that yet. We want to we want to play around with it a little bit, and then we'll add it to BC lib. Um, so instead, we're going to start off with, uh, I hope I don't have a thing called BC, I do. Oh my god. Um, what the hell is this supposed to do? Hmm. I, I hate when I have programs that I have no idea what the hell they're supposed to do. But that's because I do not um, document them. It might be documented here in README. I doubt it though. Ooh. Yeah. That was kind of a long shot that I'd actually documented something. Uh, let me see where the word magnitude appears in the C files. Need exact match to magnitude file. So exactly. This is where it'd be really useful if I had older videos of what I was doing to see what the hell I was doing. But anyway. So I'm guessing this actually spits out um, spits out the magnitude of a of an object as viewed from Earth um, for a given amount of time, which actually appears to be uh, the century that is the 20... Which century are we in? 21st century. Um, right, right. And in, we're kind of in the third decade, but not really. All right, so this is... Um, so this is kind of good that we've done all this crap. We don't uh, we don't use the phase, but we print it out. So let's take a look real quick at what this actually does, uh, assuming it, it does something. Oh dear. Um, so let's look at the brightness of our moon, which is uh, not 390, it's 301. Okay. Um, boy, this would be useful if I knew what these columns are telling me. All right, so we have... Um, the one problem here is we don't actually uh, 
we don't actually have C spice cannot give us magnitudes. So the idea here was to add a magnitude function using all of this stuff. Um, I fa uh, so I will be just. So what is I? Um, I don't know why I don't need a long integer for this sort of a period, but okay. Oh, maybe to get this multiplication to work out. Um, so you print out the time. So I'll get the phase. Wait. Oh. So we don't print out any attempt at guessing the magnitude. Although I think this will, this will, um, this is kind of the way to go with it. Um, find the distance from Earth or, you know, the observing planet. Find the distance from the thing that you are observing. Do this, do this. Now, th there's going to be a problem here, which is magnitudes are a logarithmic, um, are a logarithmic function. Uh, in other words, uh, magnitude one, sorry, magnitude four is two and a half times brighter than magnitude five. Three is two and a half times brighter than magnitude four, and so on. And that's Probably because human beings tend to see um, uh, tend to see things as logarithms. That, that the same thing is true with the decibel scale for hearing. Um, so, but we have a solution. Um, boy, we have this solution. Uh, there is a conversion from magnitudes to candela, uh, which we won't use necessarily, but it's there and it explains the logarithmic relationship. So let's go ahead and go over here maybe and uh, maybe I'll actually document this one um, is that that's C documentation right that's I think that's actually JavaScript documentation um, given an observer okay hang on I, I don't want to work really on the moon earth and sun either um, Given a light shining body, given the following, I'm going to try to mimic what I think is good documentation or better documentation from BC Lib. Um, NAFE ID of a light emitting source, e.g., the sun. Um, so the NAFE ID of an observer. Um, Berry Center. This, in this case, I don't think it's too bad using the Berry Center. And then I don't want to call this observed because it's really ugly. Um, viewed. The NAFE ID of the object being viewed. Okay, so far so good. Uh, returns something. Not really the mag. We need to we need to look at this, but something useful. We need to obviously update that. Okay. So what we're going to call this here. We got to be careful here. It's going to return a double because that's what a magnitude is. We can't really call it a magnitude because um, we might want to create a better function for that. This is just this is just uh, uh, assumed. Um, this is just that we assume that it's Lambertian, so we're only going to call it that. Okay, so spice int light spice int observer and spice int viewed. Okay. And we need to return something from it, so we'll do that later. Okay. So the uh, the first thing we need to do here is, we, well, we could copy a lot of this program here. Um, I mean, the part where we just get the amount of light, that's probably pretty easy. So let's see. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, actually, hang on. One more thing we probably need is the, the actual time. Uh, because, you know, these, these suckers move around a bit. The ephemeris time. 
Um, at at tiny t, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so the Bursch magnitude, we, we do want to have a time there. So what the first thing we need to do is not this. Um, so I think we can use both of these, and do we need, we do need to declare variables here. Um, and they need to be arrays. So we will have, um, of the light generating object, the observer object, not really an object, well I guess it is, three, so we do want those. And we're going to find the, um, I think the one clever thing I did here is I used the observer as, uh, as, the, as the middle point because we don't really need to know what it is in, uh, in, uh, you know, in ICRF coordinates. We just need to know what it is relative to something else. Okay, so we can copy these two lines. We can change them a little bit. So we want the position of... Hmm... I don't think this is correct, actually. Um... Because we want the position of the the sun and the target as viewed. Oh, why? Oh, why would I go that direction with it? All right, let me see what Spike Puzz does. I I, I, I thought I had that correct, but it, now it looks like it's backwards. And where do I have my lovely spice? I have, I have a tab open, yay! So let's do this. Spice kernel position. Okay, I guess it opens the new tabs to the left. No, it doesn't. To the right. Magically, it opens them nowhere. Um. Here it is. Okay. Um. Oh, I know what I'm doing here, because we need to know the s d distance. So the thing that's giving off the magnitude, <laughs> the thing we're observing, uh, that's the thing we need two distances from. We need the distance to the sun uh, and the distance from the Earth. Okay. Um, and we need to not do that. Okay, so that's probably why I did it that way. So... So the observer is going to be actually excuse me. The observer is actually going to be oh. So the way that it here is from the light emitting object. That's not useful. Mm. Distance of target from Earth Sun requires I feel kind of stupid now because this is clearly the Earth's distance from the Sun which is not relevant to the magnitude um, so this be sucking oh unless I'm using okay okay yeah I'm using a, I'm using an unnecessary uh, an unnecessary extra vector here Okay, so I'm looking at the distance between that and the vector. So let's, all right, so let's see where it's going to be most efficient to do. We need to know the planet's distance from the sun and the earth. So the planet should be the thing that is that is doing this. Um, now, I've done something really brilliant here, which you might have noticed. I've renamed my variables exactly the same. So, of course, I meant to say light pause, observer pause, and view pause. But I'm a moron. Okay, so from the viewed at ET, we don't really care about what coordinate system it's in. I mean, we'll use J2000, but we're only going to look at the distance. And then the light emitting object, which is the light, and put the results into viewed pause. And we do need to have LT, even though we won't use it. That's the light travel time. All right. And then, from the viewed, by the way, I think we can get rid of one of these uh, variables. Um, from the observer, uh, and we put that into observer pause. There's something wrong here. 
I think we need to put that into light pause because uh, this is as viewed from the, um, yeah, that makes more sense. The only thing we won't need is the uh, viewed pause itself because it, from itself it's zero and we, we don't care. Okay. Um, so now because we're just playing around here, we're going to, um, um, before I forget, um, uh, we do need to get the planet's albedo at some point, the, the viewed albedo. Um, so the two things we're going to have here, uh, assuming I do this correctly, um, light dist, which is just the uh, normal vector to, um, it's yeah, just the normal vector to the, uh, to the, to of light pause. It's, it's not the normal vector, I'm sorry, it's the norm of the light pause, it's the length of the light pause. And then observer dist, um, which is the norm C of observer pause. Okay. Um, so far so good. Now let's see. Angular diameter is not going to be a problem because it varies with observer distance. Although I'm still thinking there's something wrong with what I'm saying. Um, I still think we actually do need uh, the uh, the uh, yeah we do need to know the angular diameter because for example even if they were all at the same distance or whatever Jupiter a much bigger planet would reflect more light than Mars so we actually do need the angular diameter um, and that's what it's going to be dependent on and that that's the same thing as um, by the way both of these factors will be squared uh, because that's how light works. Um, not just distance. Okay. So now we can print these suckers. And let's, I mean, we need to return something. So we're going to return like zero or something. But anyway. Um, let's, go ahead and let's go ahead and not get too fancy. And print these as we just see if it will compile and all that good stuff. Observer dist. At the very sort of beginning of um, the very beginning of our, our function writing. Okay, and we might as well call it somewhere in this main program. And gotta be careful. Um. I think I can get away with this. Um, so we, we were going to early abort this program and ignore the rest of this, but we're not going to get rid of it because that would be bad. Because there might be useful stuff there. Excuse me. Lambertian magnitude. The sun. Oh, will be the viewer and the earth. And it would be good if I'd put in like a um, a time in there. I mean, I claimed I did, but I didn't really, did I? Okay. And we'll do it at time zero, just for fun. And now, let's see if this little sucker will even run. Well, let's see if we even compile. Yep. Implicit declaration of function Lambertian magnitude. And this is why people in C use um, use headers, because you have to declare this function. Whoa! You have to declare this function before you can use it. Uh, but you only have to declare the signature. But I'm going to do it the wrong way and put the uh, declaration up at top here. So this way, it's already declared, so it's not going to complain. Well, let's see, if it's not going to complain. All righty. Passing argument one specs makes a pointer from an integer. Argument one of specs will see thanks man. Argument. Um no. The first argument to this should be a um motherfucker. I'm using the wrong function again. 
I mean the one that isn't Spike. Uh, let's see. Um. Oh wow, I should be actually using um. I think it's Easy P, but it's there. We go. Um. Yes, I'm pretty sure this is correct because it's using a spice scent as the target. So I meant this sucker. God, I suck. Okay. Wow, I don't even know. Spike pauses like a weird, weird ass function. Uh, I guess we just need to tr change these three letters. Okay, now. Let's see how many errors we're down to. Control reaches. Okay, I will fix that just for now, but. Um, because we don't return anything from this function, which we have to because it says spice double. Um, let me return something that can't possibly be confused for a real value. Although at some point I'm sure I will confuse that for a real value, because that's, that's the kind of guy I am. Alrighty, there we go. So now, if it, this runs, we don't need any arguments. Okay, so that tells us the sun is about 150 ki uh, billion kilometers away, and the observ thing we're observing, the moon, is about... Th these numbers are reasonable. These numbers are quite reasonable. All right, and let's see if we can grab some data about the the moon now, the thing we're viewing. Um, and I guess I'm early tempted to sort of allow uh, us to put in these parameters, uh, you know, the uh, the parameters of the time and all this good stuff uh, as as arguments. I will not yet succumb to that desire because for right now we're still very much in the testing phase. Okay. God, I don't. I'm really bad about uh, commenting my code, even though I say otherwise. Um, of light and observer from a viewer. That's what we're doing there. Um, find viewer albedo and radii. We need the radii for the angular. Well, for angular radius. That's why we need the, you know, that. And so the function to get all that crap is the stupid function. No, it's the function that is get kernel pool values. And I know I've used it, so I'm going to just... Uh, um, I'm gonna, wherever I use the word radii, I know I have it. Um, bodvard. Bodvard. That sounds like bad word. We need the bodvard here. All right. The problem is I don't know exactly what the the uh, albedo value is. I mean, you think it's going to be albedo. I mean, that, that's kind of the guess. Body name... Mm-hmm. Um... Do I need to put it as freaking... Bo okay, I think we can do this, though. There we go. So we... Uh, now I'm worried if there's actually a better function that doesn't require this. Return values, return double precision values. Okay, good. We probably want to use this one because it uses the integer. Um, and okay, I'm going to go with albedo, but if it works, I'll be very surprised. So we want it for the Um, the viewed body, we want albedo. I probably could have copied this function over in the max, and these are the funky things that, it, because of space considerations, it needs to know. Um, there's only one value for, um, for albedo, and I need to feed it, just call it albedo. I like saying albedo over and over again. At some point, the word's going to lose all meaning. Um, ooh, I'm risking the wrath of um, of C by I'm going to send a the address of a single double precision uh, variable into where it is requesting a pointer to an array. I think this will. I don't know what the hell I think. Let's see what the hell happens. Okay. 
and then I guess we just add it to this one. We will we will not get the albedo out of this, but if we do, we'll print it. And the moon's albedo, by the way, happens to be at point one one, uh, if I remember correctly, which you know probably don't actually. Um, okay, Let's see what this does. Argument four from incompatible pointer type. One, two, three. All right. So what is spice dim? Um, it's a spice double. Hmm. Um. Yeah, I screwed this up somehow. All right, let me go ahead and copy the. I think I'm off by one in the function signature. So let me copy this function signature. Um. And what we want is the viewed. Okay, good. This is a constant. Uh, this is an integer. Oh. Yes. The the dimension will be um, an integer because it's it's a number. It's a count, basically. Um. Okay. Rock and roll. Probably still won't work, but let's see what happens. It r okay. It compiled. Now the question is, will it run? The variable body three one albedo could not. Yep, 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 that's what I thought. Okay. So we could Google around for this, but there's actually a function that tells you what variables are defined for um, what bodies. Body name, body string. Hmm. Find values. Okay, so one of these will actually tell us. Uh, th which which values are available? Okay. Determine whether values exist for some item for anybody in the kernel pool. Um, okay, that's good. That helps us m avoid mistakes. But so what I want. Um, body ID code to name translation. This is probably not what I want. Uh, into a common name for that body. Yeah. Code to string. Find what we just looked at that. Body name to ID code translation. Body return value. Let's see what this this might be it. This routine has been superseded by the things we already looked at. Okay. Alright. So there might be other variables to talk about. The kernel pool is the magic thing that we're looking at here. Um clear the pool of kernel. That's not what I want. Data for a kernel pool variable, that's n probably not what I want, but it's getting closer. Return the data about a kernel pool var variable. Um, this just tells you again if you know of a variable. Delete a variable. Well, we're getting closer. Confirm the existence of a variable. Get character data from the kernel pool. No. Get integers. There's a lot of stuff you can get for names of kernel pool variables. That'd be what we're looking for. Um, okay. So what are we doing here? We send it an, a name of something we want. Um, okay. Quick look at an example, though I think I know where they're going with this. Um, maybe not. Oh wow! I guess if you want to look for so these are the kernel variables defined like anywhere. So you can't just say for this a given body. I think we can do a little bit better than that. I think we can find the kernel pool variables defined for a given body. But let's see what this does. Yeah, this this is actually just literally gives you all of them, uh, unless you specify a mask. Kernel data, okay, that's getting better. 
Return data for the nth kernel. Jesus Christ. Kernel information. This may be getting worse and worse. Um, return information about a loaded kernel specified by name. That might be actually useful. Kernel to fetch information from available space, type of the kernel. I, again, I don't think this is true. This is right. What we need. Kernel pool, kernel totals. Load variables from kernel file into the pool. Put character strings into the pool. Put double precision number, put integers. Get size limitations. Unload a kernel. No? All right, I think we've gone through all of these and the answer is it's not gonna tell us what the kernel variables are. I mean, not easily. So what we need to do now, um, we, we can actually look at the kernel. Uh, that's a very strange thing to do, but we can. Um, let's see. And the kernel, I, so we'll go to standard.tm which is the thing I load that loads other things. Um, and I think, actually I actually have no idea what the, f which one of these is the, the thing that has the, you know, variables in it. I'm just going to guess. I'm just going to stop pretending to be smart to see what this is. Um, mass to parameter. Okay. So yeah. Um, So these, there's just some updates on it. So this is where we get body GM list, body one, uh, gravitational mass, blah, 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 albedo, your mama. Oh, so this only does a little part of that job. It does not, for example, assign radi. Okay, that's, that's cool, we're cool, we're cool, we're cool. Um, This, uh. okay, I'm actually kind of bummed out because I thought DE forty three one would do it. It doesn't appear to. Let's see if this this could just be a, this might just be a binary kernel. Yeah, it has some information in it, but. Uh, but it's not, you know, we could use comment minus r to look at that, I think. Unless I'm doing it all wrong as always, is it? Um. Come on, baby. Where's the freaking... Should be my freaking path. Anyway, um, I the BPC file is not the one we want. Those are not the droids we're looking for. No, it kind of bugs me here. Oh, actually, I've got more. I was gonna say I'm not loading DP D431 here, which is actually bad. Um, maybe this TPC file is the one we need. If things go even worse, we we do have options. But let's see if we can find it. Kind of hunting pecking. Um, this looks promising so far. It's pretty big. Um, wow. Okay, so this looks like it's going to do what we want. Um, the only problem is I might, it might not have albedo. Motherfucker. Okay, it might call it like shiny something or though. Let's see what our let's see what our variables are. Um, they have a lot of freaking. Uh, wow. Okay, so let's look at body one ninety nine should give us all of the parameters associated with mercury. Oh. That's not good at all. Um, that's really, really bad. So pole, long axis, mutation, precision, radi, polar ray. So good stuff, but um, not what we need. 
So I'm going to now do it for Star TPC, although I, don't, I doubt we're going to get anything more interesting out of it. Um, and I'll put a minus H in front of it, but I, I'm pretty sure this is just like mass and stuff, yeah. Mass, uh, gravitational mass parameter, which is the gravitational constant multiplied by mass. And a bunch of crap we don't need. Okay, so I'm going to do something that's going to not work. I'm, you know, I'm like 99% sure it's not going to work. We're going to search for sea spice albedo. Ooh. Nice. I don't know how synthetic marijuana got in there. I mean, nothing wrong with it, but um, I have no idea how it got there. Okay, well, let's take a look. Excuse me for yawning, I find you people boring. Alright, we this is probably not what we're looking for. Um Is this really part of sea spice? Well, that's kind of Or even spice? Hmm. This might be completely different. Let's go ahead and look at this. Ooh, someone a gave me an answer. The sign. Yeah, that's not helpful. Uh, is this me? No, I didn't ask that question, but I could have. Let's see. Horizons, blah, 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 blah. Okay, this is unhelpful. If you... That, that's definitely one of my answers. Whenever I say this is unhelpful. Um, BS may or may not... You might look at Spice Discussion List. Feel free to add it as one, but I'm wondering my body bear may not be spread in SPK files. Um, it seems the pit kernel is responsible for... Wow, there's a lot of good information here. Um, the NASA Horizon system has a batch interfaces. I'm working on a bulk query download, extracting data, and building a pit kernel. Um, uh, let's see. Contacting, and I might have to contact my contact again. Um yeah. Wow. I'm so smart. For asteroids. Um yep. Wow. Wow. I'm going to say wow again. Wow. All right. I thought it would be a lot easier to get the albedo. Um, so now we need to get the albedo from another source, which is brilliant. Always good. good thing to do is to use as many different sources as possible. And that is sarcasm. All right. And I know that uh, Wikipedia has these, but I don't, I don't want to go one. Um, I don't want to go one planet at a time. Um, moon planet albedo table is what we're looking for. Now I know what you're thinking. Um, both Stellarium and Cosmographia will have albedos listed as it was pointed out and we could just borrow them from there now cosmographia is actually you know spice has pretty much sort of uh, adopted it so we could use it from there um okay this is not very helpful all right so um using whatever the hell that helpful answer was this cosmograph well what the hell Um, um, Celestia. So I totally have no idea what the hell I'm talking about. I mean Celestia, not Cosmographia, and not Stellarium. Although I'm guessing Stellarium has it too, by the way. Um, uh, for other asteroids, Celestia developer. However, in own SSC file format. 
Give me a sec here, I'm going to see what I have in SSC format on my main machine. Mother of God. Um, quite a bit of stuff. Um, okay. Oops. Okay. Wow. Still no albedos. Okay. I know you can't see what I'm doing. I'm trying to find something that would be useful. Um. Wow. All right. Uh, I'm basically looking through the Celeste. Jesus freaking Christ. I'm basically looking through the Celestia um, files and it, they do look like they may have albedos for lots of crap. Minor moons, solar system, alright. Now the problem is it's very likely these albedos are not linked to the NAFE ID. I say depressingly. Um, but let's take a look here. Let's 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 take a look here. So what what do I have here? Too many too much crap. Okay. I want to look at just directory, so I'm gonna do this. Um desktop download kernels spice. I know spice doesn't have it. Python Skyfield might. Brandon Brandon's project might have this. And yes, I do know him. Um first let's look for any files called albedo. That's kind of weird. Why do we have a... Why do, why do we... Why, why bother to... Uh, oh, am I in this directory? Okay. What the hell? Uh, I'm going to go ahead and CD back. It's possible that I somehow didn't reset this directory correctly. Oh, man. This is not looking good. Um, um, I'm, they, there might be a problem with it on the other machine. So let's do this. Let's see, which of these files have the word LB? None of them. That is brilliant. Maybe it's one of the shell files that I don't really know what the hell we're doing here. Um, I guess we could look for the word magnitude, because that is, you would use the albedo to compute the mag. Nit. Ooh. Magnitude lib. That's kind of where it is, probably. pH angle factor. Planetary routines adopted from a very nice looking source. Unfortunately, I... Jesus fucking Christ. It's not super helpful, but we're getting there. Um, where is the magnitude libs for everything else? Not just the planets. Routines from many magnitudes. Are there more? No, that's it. All right, well, let's go to this, even though it is a PDF, apparently. And I'm just going to get lazy and do this. Um, I'm just going to download it directly from curl. Not even going to bother to go to the browser. And there's a good chance I already have a version of this, so I'm once again wasting lots of space. Alright, oh man. Parent planetary magnitudes. Jesus Christ. Albedo. Okay. So this is clearly getting much worse. On the albedo of... Earth, okay, no. Realistic clouds? What the hell? We've clearly stepped into very deep waters here. Um, and we've also clearly stepped into waters that don't know how to compute uh, magnitudes for um, 
for moons. I, I mean, I don't know if Brandon's doing that yet. Um, let's see. Well, I mean, we can find out. Sky field, magnitudes. Let's see. Magnitudes. Apparent. This is my, this is my uh, issue, by the way. Doesn't appear to compute planetary magnitudes. Blah, 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 blah. Blah, 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 blah. Um, um, oh, see, I, I, mentioned, I mentioned all sorts of cool things. Um, this issue is still considered open. Uh, so screw, ba screw Brandon. I have to actually, I misdid that, misspoke the first time. I have to correct myself just to insult Brandon. I'm a, I'm a, such a terrible person. All right. Um, I think, I know Stellarium dis displays magnitudes, um, so let's look for magna. Okay, this is a totally different freaking directory, you piece of crap. I don't know why you want to tell me that dot .git doesn't work here. Not looking good. Yep. So now... How many, do, how many .c files do they have? A bunch. And I actually meant to say... Parse nomad make... I actually meant to say grep minus l, not grep minus i, but anyway. External source called libtest, Jesus Christ. Um, well, it's a where the hell does the word magnitude show up here? Oh, not different kind of magnitude. And let me actually see if the word albedo shows up. That might be actually more useful to us. No! And... Parse Nomad. Um... Yeah, and that's that's for stars and stuff. Okay, so we're quite stymied here. Um, let's go ahead and get a uh, Celestia. Do I have Celestia installed here? I might actually. <laughs> that would be bad if I did, because that would have been. Um, okay. Let's see if we can get it directly from my repo. If not, I, I'm almost sure we can't. I don't think... Yeah. Gives us some other stuff, but not that. Um, Alright, so let's see if we can download Celestia from the GitHub. We actually don't need uh, Celestia itself. Um, we just need its files. And that's not how we get them. Okay. Yeah, this is just bizarre. No idea what the hell that is. Download. Um. Okay. Source code. That's what we want. Um, because all we need is the magnitudes, and that's that's. So once again, we can use our friend Git clone. And once again, we can realize we probably should have spent more time on this. Let me re-say that. Once again, we realize it's going to take a little bit of time to download. Probably could have done this somewhere else. Probably could have just copied it over from my um, copy on the VM, now that I think about it. Uh, but, you know, I, I, I don't really know where it is on the VM, to be honest. Um... Yeah, of course, you have to resolve the deltas. Wouldn't want you not to do that. Okay, good deal. Alrighty. So let's just go to Celestia. And I the files happen to be uh, SSC files. I know that, actually. Um, and they're not the locks files. The locks files are location files. So what we're looking for is... The, uh, the most obvious one is going to be data like so this one. Okay. 
Um, albedo. Ooh. Shiny. Ah. And do we, have, do we have magnitude in here? I mean, we shouldn't. Magnitude is computed, not given. Okay. Okay, so someone's done the work here. Alright, we got the albedos here. Okay, um, we need to parse this format, which shouldn't be too difficult. Um, I think. And we should be able to suck up all the albedos. Now let's see if there's a source they're using for albedos that's like, no, they're not. They're just getting them. Uh, they're just sucking them off of... Uh, um, off of Wikipedia, which is not nothing wrong with that. Uh, of the inner moons, Jesus Christ, they go they go to some extent here to um, to uh, source their data. Okay, Amalthea, Albedo, point oh six. Okay, well th this does not look too bad. The biggest problem I'm seeing with this here is there are not, well, there are not NAF IDs, but um, actually um, XV means it's the 15th moon of Jupiter, which means this NAF ID will be Jupiter's NAF ID, which is 599, or this very center is 5, so it's going to be 515. So we actually can get this data, um, these, um, these albedos, uh, transferred. Now we're going to try something that's really, really ugly. Um, and the question is, is there a page that has them all nicely so we don't have to dig through these files? Um, and the answer is, I don't know, but let's just go for the geometric albedo. The little trick you can use here is if there is a page in the world that has them, it's going to have these numbers in them. So Let's go ahead and look for these numbers. And that's what I'm meant to do. And actually, even two of them should be more than enough, assuming that there's one source that has them. And that's not what I wanted. That's interesting, though. OK, good deal. Uh, table S1. So we do have a few. Obviously, the. Uh, Ooh, that looks promising. Obviously, the one from uh, S Celestia itself is going to be there. Um, I know that's not Earth, because Earth has like a 70% albedo. So Earth might be not listed by, OK. Nice, three results. Uh, I don't, it appears from this um, that we're not going to get it, because it looks like this is going to be the... Uh, yeah, Celestium's literally the only thing that has this. Okay. Okay, I've been going for about an hour and 15 minutes. Unfortunately, I do need to take a break, which means I'm going to stop the stream and restart it. Um, although I suppose I could just leave up a timer or something, uh, but that's kind of a waste of, of time uh, and energy, I guess. Yeah, I don't really want to be doing a blank stream for a few minutes or 30 minutes. All right, so I'm going to say goodbye for now. Thank you for watching. And I should be back later this afternoon, but no promises ever. Bye-bye.